This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the mandibular lateral incisor. So here we have the mandibular lateral incisor and using the universal tooth numbering system, that would include tooth number 23 and tooth number 26. Now, this tooth is very similar to the mandibular central that we talked about in the last video. So I'm going to spend most of this video talking about the things that distinguish this tooth from its neighbor. So unlike the mandibular central, this tooth opposes two other teeth the maxillary central incisor, and the maxillary lateral incisor. So it has two contact surfaces. Specifically, it's contacting the upper central on its distal marginal ridge and the upper lateral on its mesial marginal ridge. The mandibular lateral incisor is wider and longer than the mandibular central, exactly the opposite of what we see in the maxillary arch, where the central is wider and longer than the maxillary lateral. Similar to the central incisor, the marginal ridges and cingulum for this tooth are inconspicuous. In other words, they are not that noticeable. There's not much going on on that lingual surface. Now, this is one of the most important distinguishing factors between the mandibular lateral and central you can see the distal marginal ridge peeking out from the mesial view. And that's because the crown twists around on its root base. And we call this phenomenon the distal twist. Here's another look. From the distal view, you can see now more of the facial crown surface, again, because of the distal twist of the crown. Now this was much harder to distinguish on the mandibular central because that tooth was so symmetrical, whereas this tooth is not as much. You can also appreciate the deep root depression on these teeth. From the incisal view, we once again have a facial lingual dimension that's greater than the mesiodistal dimension, but you can also see the curve on the distal half of the tooth, where the incisal edge curves lingually as you go from mesial to distal. And you can see how you would be able to visualize that distal marginal ridge from the mesial view, again, because of that distal twist. At this point in the series, we're pretty used to seeing three pulp horns, but how about the pulp canals for this tooth? Well, 55% of them tend to have one canal, and 45% tend to have two canals, making this the most likely incisor to have two pulp canals. And they usually split facial and lingual. We have the same ribbon-shaped cross-section that we did in the mandibular central, thanks to those root concavities or depressions. So a summary for the mandibular lateral incisor, incisocervical, greater than facial-lingual, greater than mesiodistal, as far as dimensions of the crown. It has that distal twist, trapezoid from the facial, triangular from the side view, ribbon cross-section. It's composed of four lobes, three pulp horns, and one or two canals, and it's also the most likely incisor with two canals. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.